First, I would like to welcome the project team leaders for Beeline Park, Corey Zetz, Daryl Johnson, and James Davies. Good morning, everyone. Thank you. Uh, I'm James Davies. I was the executive director of Bubbler Bikes when we started this project. Uh, I now work for the county, but I still think it's a great project. Um, so today we've got Daryl Johnson, the executive director of Riverworks, and Corey Zetz, the executive director of Nominee Valley Partners, uh, to tell you more about this wonderful project. Uh, thank you. I'm happy to be here. I think this is a great project, and this is a project that I've been working on for the past probably 12 years. And this project has really brought to life a lot of many things about the history of the Bear Line Trail. And as you can see, it was about a 10,000 miles of track that was laid. And one of the areas that the most busiest was the spur that went into the Harambe neighborhood. And that neighborhood, as you know, is on the northeast side of Milwaukee. And it's a neighborhood that desperate needs a lot of attention. And so for our effort, we've been working in that neighborhood and they lost over 75,000 jobs. American Motors was there, Johnson and Troves was there. And also this rail line also serviced the breweries within Milwaukee, Slits and Paps. And from there, I just want to turn it over to Corey to kind of talk about the overall mission of the partnership. Thanks, Daryl. The, yeah, so the mission of this whole partnership is, is really to sustain and enrich the lives of people in Harambe River West by promoting health, well-being, increased prosperity through circulation of resources, voices, ideas, labor, and creativity. And you can see some of the, the partners who've really been engaged in this project for many years, really read, led by uh, Daryl and his team at Riverworks, but with a lot of others as well. Uh, it is also part of this overarching vision called the Route of the Badger. Um, you can see on this map here the, the section we're talking about today, the Beeline Park. And that is just one piece, like a one-mile piece of a larger 17-mile loop that impacts our seven-county uh, area. Um, there are a lot of trails that it connects to already, and then um, really making the link to other neighborhoods in the city of Milwaukee that are unserved or underserved by trail access. Um, this whole project will be part of connecting 35 Milwaukee neighborhoods. Um, and in this map here, you can see some sections uh, through partnerships that have already been uh, funded and soon to be built. So uh, WISDOT has, through the I-43 reconstruction project, funded this green line here that you can see um, in the city of Milwaukee, the city of Glendale, Milwaukee County uh, have been part of that work as well. This will connect um, to the 20th Street Power Line Trail, that, that pink line, uh, connect eventually to the 30th Street street corridor trail, and then hit down to the Hank Aaron State Trail. This is all part of the overall uh, Milwaukee Road um, network of former rail lines and really connecting the community. Uh, the biggest thing about this is this not just laying the trail, it's really activating the trail. And as you can see on some of these pictures, we have taken an old shipping container and turned it into a stage area. We also have done green infrastructure uh, we work with a lot of local artists um, doing murals on some of the older buildings within the area. Uh, we have worked with the city of Milwaukee to actually maintain this trail, actually from Grimham all the way up to Capitol Drive. And this is an area that cuts through two neighborhoods, as you can see, for the train. It cuts through River West and Harambe. And some of the other improvements we have is the murals that were done by youth in the neighborhood that shows how this train not only serviced breweries, but also brought in the circus wagons. I don't know if many remember the circus that used to happen in Milwaukee. So this is where offloaded all the, the wagons and the animals before they went down to the lakefront. And what we have done over the years is really program the trail. And, and 
through residents' involvement. So we have a number of things that's happening. One of the things that residents came together is said, let's, let's do a butterfly garden. I said, what is a butterfly garden? So they said, what we're going to do is really take a, a part of the trail and really grow flowers that attract butterflies. So that's one of the things that will be happening on the trail. We have cleanups on a regular basis. We also have music on the Bear Line Trail that's kind of focused on bringing music to the neighborhood. We also have um, the Bear Line Shuffle, which is a, a event where we just walk the trail, kind of hang out and meet your neighbors. And we also have other upcoming events just to kind of program the trail. And this continues, you know, we look at the vision of what we want this trail to be. We got um, residents involved early on and really start um, planning what was going to happen within the neighborhood. So we started working with a number of local artists. We started working with a, a gentleman out of Oakland, California, Walter Hood, and really kind of laid out what we call the life waste plan for the trail. And it's a one mile stretch starting at Richardson Capitol, um, all the way to Capitol Drive. And through that efforts, we have done a number of projects, but we're still in the early planning stages and also looking at what the residents feel. So there'll be trees, there'll be a larger stage area out there. Um, there'll be a programming that really attracts people, not only from the neighborhood, but from the outside the neighborhood. What we're looking to create is what we call a world-class park. Um, this is a place where not only people in the community can come to, but also people outside the community. And as I mentioned earlier, Walter Hood was very involved with this. And we also want to connect the trail to the larger bike network, not only for biking, but also pedestrians. Uh, we really want this project to be a community center development project and also work with residents in the neighborhood so they can program and be involved in the overall project. Uh, some of the features that we're talking about is greenhouse play structures, workout equipment, community greenhouse, increased resident involvement um, within the neighborhood. As we look at the larger stage area, um, which we have two entranceways right now, it's, you can come on at Keefe Avenue or you can come on at Capitol. We're creating these access ways from the community onto the trail. So within these areas, we'll have a larger stage, we'll have mural sculptures, um, play equipment, and things that really kind of represents the community as we move forward. And also we're looking to do a bike shed. We give about away about 100 bikes a year. Um, so we want to create that space within the community where the kids can come and get their bikes repaired, but also a place where people just kind of hang out and have conversations about what's happening in the neighborhood. Uh, this is our latest project, and this is on the corner of Keith and Richards. Um, we call this the Connected Building. Uh, we have some local people that came together and want to open up a juice and coffee shop. And the name of the juice and coffee shop is Kuma Juice. Uh, right now they open Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from 7 in the morning to 2 o'clock. And the back half of the building is called the community room space. We have opportunity for residents to use the space, businesses to use the space, but also it's a gathering place. And it's right there um, connected to the trail itself. Um, this is the interior. Like I so said, we have the history of the beer line. Um, with the railway on the inside within the community room. We also have patio area for people to gather. Um, there'll be tables um, and other things out there. One of the things we just decided to go with is the number of bikes. So you can go into the coffee shop and fill up your cup with fruits and vegetables and take it outside, stick it on top of your bike and pedal and, and stir it up and you have your drink that you made there yourself. Also, um, other features, and actually one of the biggest things is really making this, this space safe for people to come out. So there will be lighting, there will be additional things out there. And, and what we want to do is really provide access for not only the, the residents in the neighborhood, but people who want to come in and hang out and have a good time within the Herb Run Bay area. So we also really wanted to hit on who this project serves. Uh, it's primarily serving the residents of River West and Harambe, 30,000 Milwaukee residents, 50% uh, in Harambe, 25% in River West who are currently living below the poverty line, 85% um, in Harambe who identify as African American. So this is really bringing some of the resources, the, the connectivity, 
uh, the art, the neighborhood engagement that we see in other neighborhoods throughout the city, but not really, that we really need here. One of the things uh, that I'm really excited about is the economic impact we uh, anticipate this project to bring. And some of this we're, we've already seen in these projects like the um, connector building that Daryl just showed. Um, it, this linear park, the B-Line, is part of a much larger overarching vision that builds on revitalization efforts focused on anti-displacement, affordable housing, business development, health and wellness, and community wealth building. Um, we, we anticipate a lot of investment continuing from this for in terms of affordable housing, commercial and industrial community space, and public safety and public art. And, you know, I have personally, um, for those who don't know, I've been for almost the last 20 years working on the Hank Aaron State Trail and revitalization of the Menominee Valley. And so I see, like, we have seen this happen in the city. We've seen what that trail that Hank Aaron did for the valley and the neighborhood surrounding it. And we know it has the potential to do the same thing in Harambe and River West. Um, so the types of investments we see along trails that make these areas that have been you know, tracks that are abandoned and feel like a blight and on a neighborhood become uh, something that activates, brings people together, encourages investments, and builds wealth within the community for the community it serves is really what this project is all about. And in addition to that, it is also full of opportunities for Rotarians to get engaged. Um, there is a beer line shuffle uh, every October. I have done this with my family every year since it started. Um, it is one of the most fun events. Uh, we can have a rot rotary team. Uh, it walks the whole length. There's great music throughout and Purple Door ice cream. Um, there's music on the Beer Line Trail series and that um, old shipping container with the murals that Daryl showed. So we can have rotary events there. Um, there are lots of opportunities for done in a day committee. We can do cleanups, plantings, um, and then uh, Daryl had mentioned the Kumba Art, uh, Kumba uh, Coffee and Juice Bar, which is a great place for the coffee connector. And the community room hosts art shows, a great place for the art connector to meet. Um, you know I'm looking at you. <laughs> um, we also have like longer term opportunities like raised bed and greenhouse planting, selection team for the rotating arts and murals. And opportunities for Rotarians to join the Friends of the Beer Line Trail to really think about trail programming going forward. This is the most exciting part of the presentation. $8 million project um, for the V-Line Park itself, we're talking about $6,130,000. Uh, connector building, $825,000, which is um, paid for. Um, the connecting points that we talked about as we leave the city of Milwaukee, go into Glendale, come back in the city. So all that connection is there um, going underneath I-43. Uh, also, we put aside about two years of programming uh, for maintenance of the trail, which is $345,000. And this is what we have raised to date is like 2.6 million. Um, as you can see, the total gifts committed, um, the verbal commitments, and so the overall is at 2,600. We have raised to date that amount, but we have really had 61 people involved in this donation. I know this is very small, it's very hard to see, but this gives you the, the timeline. Um, the first is really the grand opening of the connected building, which happened in September. Then in March, we looked at really hiring the architect for this year, uh, March. Then also we're looking to hire a local contractor to start doing the build out. Then we have two access ways onto the trail, one coming from the east side, one from the west side. So the east side would be done in July, and hopefully the one on the west side would be done in September. Then we kind of, kind of look at our quiet phase of fundraising, uh, which is the blue market um, at the bottom. And we hope this project will be completed as we go into the last quarter of 2025. Uh, this is a great opportunity for our organization. Actually, we're a small organization. We've been around almost 32 years. And this is one of the biggest projects that we, we have worked on. We have done housing within this area. We have done retail development. Uh, we also have our office right there on the trail. So we just want to make sure that we let everybody know what we do. And I also want to thank a lot of Rotarians and also the Rotary Club for this opportunity so you can see the names up there. 
So I'm going to kind of, one last thing I want to share with you. Um, I, I'm out there almost every day, but I'd like to have opportunity to share this with you. So on March 23rd at 9 o'clock on Saturday, we're going to meet at Kuma Juice and Coffee and tour the community room, but also walk the trail. So if you are interested, um, please let us know. At this time, if there's any questions, uh, we can go ahead and take them.